you. All right. Good morning. My name is Dylan Leith, and um, I'm here to talk about investing, but with such a broad spectrum of things to talk about investing, I want to talk specifically about the importance of investing young in your retirement. Now, everyone here who's ever worked or filled out a W-2 and works on the books um, is a contributor to federal and state tax withholdings. Now, the majority of us, because we make less than, uh, I believe it's $14,000 a year, are exempt from almost all federal and state withholdings, with the exception of Social Security. Now, with that said, this is not an exact quote, but this is me paraphrasing uh, a report done by the U.S. Social Security Administration. They're taking your money. That's the only uh, federal withholding that you do not get as an exempt, making less than $14,000 a year because it's so important that everyone contributes. But the latest reports from the U.S. Trustee, uh, so the U.S. trustees of the U.S. Social Security Administration say that by the year 2017, the fund will begin to give out more than it takes in, and by the year 2042, will have given will have paid out all the interest that they accrued on the the, the fund from 2000 from 2017 to 2014. The way this works is that when you pay into Social Security, they right out the door right away pay out about 80 percent of what they collect. The rest of that is given to the U.S. Treasury in exchange for U.S. Treasury bonds, and the interest on that is then paid once again in Treasury bonds, and that money is saved for, for future payouts. With that said, I want to take, don't want you to take my word for it, but if we look directly at the report from, this is from the uh, Social Security Administration's website, if we scroll down to... If you look at an intermediate projection, there's there's low, high, and intermediate. So we took about the minimum. Uh, we will see that starting in about the year. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Starting in about the year 2017, actually 2016 here in 2020. Um, the balance in the account will go negative, negative 97. The year 2017 isn't shown because they're doing it in, uh, in increments. But as you can see right there, directly from the Social Security's website, they'll show you that the balance of the Social Security account is projected to be in a deficit by the year 2020, but it's actually 2017. So with that said, what's the reason behind this? This is a ratio of the population of, age, of people age 65 to the population in general. And you can see just around 2017, there's a spike, and this is when baby boomers begin to turn 65. This is a ratio of the people who work, the, the, the people who work relative to those who are then retired. As you can see, just around 2017, this starts to plummet going all the way down. This is, this is the amount of the ratio of people in the workforce. So you can see less and less people will be in the workforce paying out constantly in Social Security while all those baby boomers are collecting Social Security. So with that said, everyone can say, um, most people rely on Social Security. 33% of, of people rely on Social Security for 90% or more of their income. 22% Social Security is their sole source of income. You can see here with low range workers, you get about 55.9% of your average salary for your entire work, working life. Medium is 41%. And so the more money you make, actually the less you take in. With that said, what actually happens, actual payouts, Every check is about 1,000 for all, all Social Security paid out. Each average check is about $1,000 a month, which equals about $12,000 a year. Most people say, it's okay, I'll have my pension, so it's not important for me to save and retire for, uh, or sa save for retirement at such a young age. With that said, uh, pensions are almost non-existent anymore in the private sector. It's al something almost exclusively found in the, pub in, the, uh, in the public sector, working for the government and such. Uh, companies can no longer afford to to, to pay people or to give people a pension as a benefit. This is seen by GM has extremely high legacy costs. They say they, they lose about $1,600 per car every time that they sell a car. That's why they're losing, they're losing so much money because of the, the pension payouts that they're having to give, what they call it a legacy cost from all the people who work for them in the past. Those people are now retired. Um, this is also apparent in, in the airline industry. Low cost airlines have thrived in the last 10 years because of the high legacy costs that the original carriers like American Airlines and United have to pay to those people who worked for them several years ago. Um, also, the, the way people work is now changing. People no longer work the same job for 40 years. People 
it's, it said that an average people work three to five careers in their lifetime in between 10 and 12 jobs. Um, and even those people who have, who have uh, pension plans, a lot of them are going bankrupt and they've paid into it their entire lives and they're getting none of that back. This is evident with the subprime lending that's, that's been going on recently. A lot of people bought into, a lot of, a lot of uh, retirement plans bought into CMOs and some of the security-backed mortgages, and then when they went bust, all that money was lost. So there was poor management that went on, and those, a lot of those plans are now bankrupt. So why is this important? A study by the University of Pittsburgh School of Business says that millennials, which is us, everyone aged 18 to 25, feel very uncomfortable about making significant financial decisions. 58% uh, do not currently have any investments through themselves or through a guardian. 43% cannot name a single investment management firm, and 45% cannot correctly define a bond, and 41% cannot correctly define a mutual fund. So what should you do? Three things. Start young, take advantage, and take control. Start young. The reason it's so important to start young is the, the miracle of compound interest, as it's called in the uh, investment world. This chart shows that if you start at 25 and you invest $1,000 a year at 7%, which is extremely conservative, you will accrue uh, $214,000. $214, now, if you were to wait till you were 35 to do the same thing and invest $1,000 at 7% under the, under the same parameters, you will only accrue $100,000. And if you think about the difference between here, it's only $10,000 of investing, but the difference between here is over $112,000. Um, if you were to wait till you're 45, this is all assuming that you retire at 65, you will only accrue about $44,000. Um, I want to take a second to uh, get a volunteer from the audience, and we can look at the importance of, uh, of investing early. Oh, this might not. This, this might not work. Oh, here we go. Okay, so if someone wanted to give me a, uh, an average salary that they think that they'll make um, starting anyone their first year out of school. All right, so let's say you make $36,000 a year and you plan to contribute 10% of your income, which is, which is pretty good. And what, what age will you graduate? You'll be 26. Retire at 65, say an, anu an annual rate of return of 9% and you invest $1,000 a year into your, uh, year into your 401k, your employer matches 50%, you calculate you have saved over $1.5 million by the time you retire at 65. And this is all due to, due to the miracle of compound interest. You can do the same thing with, just sa with a regular savings account or um, regular time account. So if you look here, once again, even if you invest starting at 25 for 10 years only, $1,000 a year at 7% that's under this, the same assumptions, and you only, uh, you only invest from 25 to 35, you will accrue $112,000. If you wait until you're 35 and you invest for 30 years, investing $30,000 of your own money, you will still only, you will still only accrue $101,000. So it's so important because if you start early, you'll have so many more compounding periods that you need to invest so much less at a younger age um, in order to collect a significant amount at the end. This is evident by, this, this, is, this makes the assumption that you invest at 10%, $2,000 a year. This is showing if you start at 22 and you invest $2,000 a year, you can have $1.1 million at age 65. If you were to wait until you're 37, you would have to invest $8,000 a year to get that same amount. So if you see this breaks it down every year, it shows you you're, you're losing money every year that you wait to invest in your own retirement. So take advantage, this is the next step. There's 401ks and 403bs. Most, most of you will probably enroll in a 401k um, unless you work in a non-for-profit, that's one of the 403B or you're an independent contractor. You also have IRAs and Roth IRAs, and, or just investing in your own. If you don't use one of these tax shelters, it's important just to invest in some capacity. Take control. Learn the terms of, of, your, of your 401K. Learn the terms of IRAs. Learn the rules. Learn, learn how they work and, and how they can work for you. Second is to set goals for yourself. Figure out, say, what do I want to do when I retire? How do I want to live? Where do I want to live and what kind of lifestyle do I want to maintain? Make a plan. Figure out where you're going to start, what time you're going to retire, and how you're going to reach those goals that you set. And fourth is talk to a professional. So many people think that they can take these things in their own hand. Um, just like you want to try to fix your, your, the electrical system in your house or you want to 